Hi, welcome to ATX LED. Today we will be building a 4 light fixed white dimmable series circuit. This 4 light series circuit is a critical building block of the ATX LED system. We will also cover series wiring, a concept that is crucial to the proper installation of the 4 light dimmable circuit. Please refer to the wiring guide for detailed drawings of each circuit type. We will refer back to this drawing later. ATX LED wafer lights come two to a box. Fixed white dimmable lights have a single wire pair connection located on the back side. This quick connector pair is called OJ606, comprising of a male and female component. Each part is clearly marked with a positive and negative symbol. It is important to keep track of this polarity. If you are working in a poorly lit workspace, it might be helpful to mark the positive side with a marker. This is the ALWSDR1 wall switch. It supports up to four of the dimmable four inch LED wafer lights. Its basic components are the LED lighting terminal, the in-way terminal, and the DC power bus. 20 gauge two conductor wire is used for our lighting circuits, meaning any connection from the switch to the lights and between lights. Do not use 20 gauge to carry power to your switch. Please use the correct notch on your strippers to prevent marring the copper wire, which may lead to breakage later. Begin the circuit by stripping the end of your 20 gauge wire. Please note that this presentation is a bench build. In the field you might do this in a different order, but the overall circuit scheme will be the same. The LEDs are always connected to the LED terminal on the back of the wall switch. As per convention, red will always be positive DC voltage, and white or black will correspond to negative DC voltage. Positive and negative are marked on the switch. Before we continue, let's take a moment to better understand this circuit. It is important to note that this is a series circuit, and these LEDs do have polarity. This means that the power must enter from the positive direction, and leave from the negative. If you follow the red wire from the LED terminal of the wall switch, it goes first to the positive side of the connector. It then leaves the negative side before proceeding to the next light's positive connection. In, positive, out, negative. The circuit is concluded by connecting the negative leg of the last light to the negative terminal of the switch. The circuit will fail if this order is not followed. Now we will do the same thing on the bench. Begin by teasing apart the two wires. The white wire is our negative and will be used to complete the circuit. Leave this wire uncut. Cut the red wire and strip both ends. These will be inserted into the OJ606 connector. Remember to pay attention to direction. The red wire end nearest the switch connects to the positive port of the connector, and the other red wire end will connect to the negative port before proceeding to the next light. In, positive, out, negative. Now we follow this pattern for the next two lights. When we get to the end of the line, we use the white wire on the negative port of the connector. Since we didn't make any cuts to the white wire, it will flow without interruption back to the negative terminal of the wall switch. Now that I have the circuit set up with the necessary connectors in the correct order, it is a simple matter to connect all of the lights. Now 
Next we will connect the home run to the switch's power terminal. Be sure that these wires are disconnected from power before you do this step. Red connects to the positive bus and white connects to the negative bus. The green wire is the earth ground, or bonding wire. Connect the home run's green wire to the switch's green wire with a wire nut. In our shop, we like to use these Wago lever nuts. Next step is to connect the home run to the power distribution board. Simply click the KF connector in place. Now that the switch is powered, we can check its function. Cycle it on and off several times. Work the slider up and down to check for proper dimming controls. At this point I noticed that the lights cut out completely at the lowest dim setting. This is incorrect. But it's easily remedied. The DR1 wall switch is equipped with a minimum dim adjustment screw. So with the slider all the way down, use a screwdriver to tune the lights until they are set at a satisfactory level. With the adjustment complete, we do a final check, and we're good to go. Thanks for watching. Check out our website, atxled.com, or email sales at atxled.com.